Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you, good afternoon. Welcome back to the channel and welcome today to Manhart, where we're going to take a look at their first ever Porsche project. This is the TR700 based on the 911 991.2 Turbo, except this car has over 700 horsepower and almost 1,000 newton meters of torque. So let's take a look around, talk about the modifications that have been made to it, and then we'll hop in to go for a drive to experience what it's like. So let's get started and check out the TR700. Let's take a look at this then with the afternoon sun coming in through the windows. The first Manhart Porsche project based on the latest generation of the 911 Turbo. So not the Turbo S, but the power gains are just crazy. As well as that, it also has a new Manhart exhaust system, a stainless steel muffler. You can see it's running on the Techart Formula 4 wheels and presented here in Manhart's design spec with the black paintwork finished with gold accents all around. Just taking a look though the turbo is a daily driver a discreet subtle car but so immensely powerful even from factory it's all-wheel drive the dual clutch seven speed pdk gearbox system the normal car would have the 3.8 liter turbocharged flat six making 540 horsepower this makes 173 horsepower more up to 713 not only that though the standard car's torque is 710 newton meters. This has 971, 261 newton meters more. So I think you can expect putting that power down with the all wheel drive, this thing is going to be blisteringly quick. It is of course rear engine and back here, we've got the Manhart TR700 designation in the gold to match with the stripes. You can see that it's got this new spoiler add-on from Mozhammer as well, which I actually quite like. It's quite subtle, but enhances the appearance. In fact, the car combines basically the best parts that Manhart could bring together to create this package and offering. And then down here at the back, you've got the tailpipes either side with their new exhaust system that we will hear very shortly. So that's more or less an introduction to the car. Let's head round, start it up and hear how it sounds. Normally the startup sound from a 911 Turbo is not all that loud but let's take a listen to this. The car also has an IPD intake and as you can see it's sitting quite low on H&R lowering springs as well but let us come in and take a listen then to the start. Well that's louder than I expected rumbles into life. Cold startup, roaring away. They've also made the calipers gold to match the livery. But listen to the turbo whistle. That's a really cool sound actually. There's so much turbo whistle. I can just stand here listening to that. Bubbling away. Anywho, let me jump in then. Let's see what this is like. To be honest, I've never really spent any significant amount of time in the 911 Turbo, which given quite how popular the model is, as a usable everyday, very quick sports car slash supercar, depending how you want to consider it. You know, ultimately the Turbo and the Turbo S are basically the fastest usable versions of the Porsche 911. Of course, I've spent a lot of time in my GT3. I've driven the GT3 RS, the GT2 RS, the versions that are more suited for the racetrack with more aero, but I don't think for quite a while I've been behind the wheel of the daily version of that and you know this thing is capable of incredible performance from factory the turbo the turbo s the turbo s has about 40 horsepower more and around 50 newton meters of torque more but basically it's just a kind of software thing between the two cars but the way the traction control works the way the launch control works they get moving so very 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 quickly and to be honest just driving of course it's the evening now so hopefully we're not going to have too much by way of rush hour but it is 
you know, we just went over a pretty big bump. It is fairly smooth, gentle. The sound is not intrusive. We're in the normal driving mode. You have to toggle on the steering wheel to go between the different driving modes that you have. So the startup earlier was in Sport Plus where the exhaust valve is completely open and basically you get as much noise out of it as you want. But it's super, super smooth. The gearbox is amazing. The BDK gearbox in every car, it just transforms from being completely seamless in the background to being very, very, very quick when you want to drive and actually push on a little bit harder. But cruising like this, you know, we've got the dampers in a softer setting, you can firm it all up. This car has the change dampers to the H&R setup and it's sitting very, very low. But even still, I don't feel at the moment like the ride is compromised as a result. Yes, it's firm, but it's not over the top. Uh, so to speak and remember even if you are to take one of these on a racetrack it's very 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 quick uh, at that end as well and also if you look behind there's actually a 2 plus 2 configuration you could squeeze two small people in the back too so we're just cruising along gently at the moment getting a feel for what it's like if I turn up through the different driving modes into sport you can hear a bit of the exhaust valves open and then into sport plus when it opens up fully and drops some gears as well so it actually has spoilers at the front and at the rear that retract and change and I can see the tip of the spoiler at the back um, at the moment so by default I think now we're in manual just to drop down some gears you get quite a lot of sound going on in here so given I never completely gelled to be honest with my GT3 am I going to feel more in the right place with this is this what I perhaps should have got so it's not too turboed in terms of the sound. Yes, it doesn't go up to 9,000 RPM. It stops at about, I think, just shy of 7,000 RPM. But the sound is very similar. Of course, the 3.8 litre as opposed to 4 litre. You can put the uh, gear shift to the left if you want to go completely manual on it. But like this, it's very docile and relaxed. It's not so crazy. Let's get to some countryside roads, then to the autobahn to get a mix of different driving environments and what it's like. The thing I immediately find quite fun about this car is that we've got a sunroof and we've got almost a thousand newton meters of torque in the same car. And for example, four wheel drive here, just feed in the power, not a concern at all. It, it gives you this sense that daily driving this car is not an issue. And obviously I've not stretched the performance envelope beyond the stock car at all at the moment. We've not done anything that the regular 911 turbo as you buy it from the dealer can do. I will in a moment though, just give it a, uh, a little bit of a press. Yeah, and you start to feel that. I mean, that's not even being too dramatic with it, just gently feeding in the power. You're very, very acutely aware of how much of it this car actually has. The torque is just... Okay, so it's not dramatic. Of course, you've got some sound. The, the exhaust is louder than the stock car quite significantly, but it's not, it's not push you to the back of your seat crazy like you might get from level Ferrari, McLaren, Lamborghini, whatever it may be. In fact, the turbocharged kind of sound is similar to that of a McLaren. You feel that same noise feel from it. There's not too much waiting for the turbos, but when they do come, they are literally all over the place. It's it's uh, an easy car, it feels, to drive quickly down a countryside lane. So let's hopefully get away from a bit of traffic and get to enjoy it a bit. definitely getting a feel for what people like about the 911 Turbo and this is honestly without doing anything crazy you can get that sensation that it is the daily driver I don't know how how best to actually put that into words but it goes about business like it's nothing you know it just drives it just drives like a completely normal car and we haven't even yet pushed it in the way I know it can the way that you see these cars doing like 50 launch controls, one after the other, after the other, after the other, just bulletproof reliability. It just works every single time. And, well, I've had a small sensation, but I have to slow down so much to give you a sense of what it's like when you accelerate, because it's just so fast. And there we go, that's the speed limit. Just like that, just done. Like, I can't, I can't give you an idea for how quick this car is, unless I can find some de-restricted autobahn, because, 700 horsepower, 1,000 newton meters, do the maths. It's gonna be a very, very fast thing whichever way you look at it. Joining the Autobahn then, I am not hugely confident that it's going to be empty enough to really stretch the legs of this thing this evening, but we will give it a go if the opportunity presents itself to get a feel for what the power delivery is like, how capable it is. I think it opens up to a de-restricted section any moment now, but as you can see, quite a few cars 
front, unfortunately. Let's just hope we get one stretch to really get to experience it, because to be honest, I'm expecting it to just be confident and stable, the four-wheel drive system, but oh, so powerful. And I've been driving right now, we're in Sport Plus, so we get the full power, and the stock car gets its extra torque from overboost, of course, um, up from the normal torque. So really, we're talking a lot of torque in this thing. Awful, awful lot. You get a lot more sound, of course, as the speed increases as well. And then second gear, wow aggressive shifts very very aggressively into the next gear but might be a touch too busy okay this is a little bit better then we've got a slightly emptier stretch in the other direction so let's get a feel for this we're already going 200 odd kilometers an hour and this is what the turbo s is about you know it's german engineering at its finest it does this without breaking a sweat i put my foot down in fifth gear we can use some more of the torque fourth gear just monumental, up to 200 like it's nothing, absolutely nothing, 100 or so to 200. Goodness, okay. So I get the small sensation that it's powerful, relentlessly powerful, but I feel like it will keep doing that into silly digits. It just opens up a touch in front with fourth gear, all the way up, wow. It's like one of those roller coasters that just forces you into the back of the seat. I wasn't looking at the speedo because I'm so conscious of how quickly we're gaining speed. Unfortunately though, it is looking far, far too busy in this direction. I will try to spin around because I think the other side might be less busy. But hopefully, hopefully we can have one little go. Here we go then, third gear, and we're off into four, 200 already. Wow. 50 already, okay, hard on the brakes. Clearly, it's a bit of a rocket. I think that was always going to be a given. Surprisingly, it actually moves around more than I perhaps expected it to, but less dramatically than the non-turbocharged 911s. Although, speaking of that, in fact, obviously the Carrera and Carrera S are now turbocharged engines. It's a very confusing one in the model lineup. But yeah, I had a small sense of what this car is capable of there just how quickly it picked up the rate of knots. But let's spin ourselves back around and head the other way. It is very much starting to get dark now, but we do have some slightly emptier stretches. It makes so much difference. I know this is logical, but when you put your foot all the way to the floor, you get so much more pickup than when you were only, say, half pressing the throttle pedal. It really is easy to kind of decide how aggressively you want to drive the car. I just wish it was... Oh, it makes you go silent when you're accelerating again up to 200 out of nowhere. Obviously the four-wheel drive helping over the little bump that we had in the tarmac. It's... well, it's fast, that's for sure. Up to the red line, this is just blisteringly quick. Wow, 230 just in the space of nothing kilometers per hour of course but it picks up and it's 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 relentless it's absolutely relentless it just pushes you and keeps pushing you and in such a short stretch I feel like going to 300 kilometers an hour is just well, a dog a complete walk in the park for this car one of the topics I raised earlier though was whether this is the kind of 911 I should have bought as opposed to the GT3 would it have suited me more Given that I do a lot of road driving, I use you know my AMG GTR almost daily, and the GT3 just wasn't the right car for that. It was a bit raw. You felt everything. It shook around a little more than I kind of wanted it to. Whereas this obviously doesn't have those characteristics, but then it loses the noise. It loses the sheer, I think, excitement of it. You get some noise, obviously. The exhaust significantly helps, I believe, over the standard in this car, but. It's not, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. I think it's still the same for me. It's 911, it's not a you know, bespoke supercar, so to speak. However fast it may be. Alas.
gas a little too busy, but what a sound hey as well from the car coming here into the showroom. So what I've experienced is the usable nature of it, but how brutally quick this car is, and also how much better it sounds than a standard 911 Turbo as well. And I particularly like the way it's presented, sitting low with the Manhart design livery on it as well. And let me come around and just show you the interior actually, because we haven't really focused on this. Completely standard inside the car, but you have, I think, the 18-way adaptive sports seats. Of course, the fairly small steering wheel with the toggle here to go through your different modes, uh, your PDK selector, your traditional uh, five Porsche 911 dials on the dashboard. But basically, a well-finished, nicely equipped, good technology level interior. So all around, quite a good car for the purpose. And then you have the plus two configuration in the rear, should you wish, for some small passengers or to put some luggage back there as well. It's putting luggage in the uh, front bonnet, the front that you have too. You can actually see it here. Excuse that it's quite dark, but with the turbo front spoiler down as well, uh, the rubber. So this comes to counter the movement of the spoiler at the back, um, standard on the turbo and turbo S when the rear spoiler uh, would raise uh, automatically too. And actually just in front of that, you can see the intakes that the dot two generation of the car carries. So there we have it. A look at the Manhart TR700 today, but also some fun car to drive would have been nice to stretch the legs a little bit more but alas it is what it is so big thanks to them for the opportunity to come down thank you very much to you guys for watching the video i appreciate your support as always but that's it for this time i will see you again very soon cheers